Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko says the leader of Russia's Wagner mercenary group has returned to Russia, suggesting he is in St. Petersburg now. He also says the offer to have Wagner fighters stationed in his country still stands. Evgeny Prigozhin had gone into exile in Belarus after his brief mutiny in a deal agreed with Russian President Vladimir Putin. As for Yevgeny Viktorovich Prigozhin, he is in St. Petersburg. Where is he this morning? He might travel to Moscow or he might be elsewhere, but he's not on Belarus territory. I don't think that Wagner will revolt and turn their weapons against Belarus and its authorities. Anything can happen in life, but I don't see such a situation. Yulia Shabavalova is in Moscow on this. Yulia, tell us everything we know at this stage on Prigozhin, his whereabouts, and the status of Wagner fighters as well. So the founder of the Wagner Group has returned from Belarus to Russia. That's according to President of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, as we just heard. He said, quote, Prigozhin is in St. Petersburg, but maybe he went to Moscow in the morning. So according to Lukashenko, the fighters of the Wagner Group are in their permanent camps on the territory of Russia, and all the movement of Wagner fighters into Belarus depends on their management and the Russian authorities. Uh, Lukashenko also said that he was absolutely not worried worried about a number of Wagner fighters stationed in his country. If Belarus needed to use them, they would be used instantly by the country, and that uh, Belarus appreciated their combat experience. He also ruled out a possibility that Wagner could turn its weapons against Belarus. Uh, he said that he had spoken with Yevgeny Prigozhin on the phone and discussed the further actions of Wagner and its future. And, of course, he also assured that President Putin did not intend to destroy or wipe out, as he said, Prigozhin, and uh, basically he shared his plans to discuss Prigozhin at a forthcoming meeting with uh, the Russian president, uh, with President Putin. Uh, interesting. Uh, yesterday, July the 5th, uh, the Fontanka and Izvestia news outlets, as well as the State Russia One TV channel, showed footage of a search in a mansion allegedly owned by Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, he himself did not comment on the search, and so did the Ministry of Internal Affairs and other law enforcement agencies. The search took place on June the 24th, the very day of the Wagner armed rebellion. And during the search, uh, some, uh, some weapons, cash money, fake passports, wigs and even a helicopter were found. All that, including numerous photographs of Prigozhin with a changed appearance, uh, were presented by the journalists. So all that is very significant as uh, the world wants to know uh, the whereabouts of Russia's uh, former warlord and uh, uh, who basically fulfilled Russia's tasks abroad in, in the countries. In, in some African countries in particular, as well as he was involved in the Ukrainian campaign, of course, and in the fight for Bakhmut, and who basically stands behind the armed rebellion here in Russia that took place almost two weeks ago. Uh, Yulia Shabavalova reporting from Moscow. Thank you very much for that. And I'm joined now by Pavel Felgenhauer. You are a defense and military analyst and joining us uh, on Skype from Moscow, sir. What do you think is going on here with Prigozhin apparently returning to Russia? Uh, well, he didn't really go away from Russia. He had made a, a brief visit to Belarus and then returned. So he's not in exile there. Wasn't There's he supposed to stay in Belarus? Wasn't that the deal? Uh, actually, apparently not. Uh, the, the deal was that he will move his base there, maybe in the future, but immediately right now not. There's, I would say, a ceasefire between Prigozhin and the Kremlin, a uh, kind of freeze of the situation that was agreed uh, together with uh, President Lukashenko of Belarus. Uh, and this is an uneasy ceasefire, but both sides are more or less holding it. Uh, Prigozhin is traveling in Russia, uh, doing his business. And it was mentioned earlier that there was money seized, uh, actually a lot of sir, money. Sir, Three, quick pause, uh, quick plans. pause, because the, the, yes. your, words, your words strike me. That I find it very interesting. You say Prigozhin is in Russia doing his business. Only a few days ago, his business involved turning his thousands of armed men towards the Kremlin. Why is Putin allowing this? What's your best explanation on that? Well, as I say, it's a ceasefire between the Kremlin and Prigozhin and his Wagner group. They retreated from attacking Moscow, but there's still a fighting credible force. 
and apparently the Kremlin is not ready to take them on. They are not on Russian territory. They're basically, I mean, there's a legality there. They're on in the Donbass, what the international community considers Ukrainian territory. But they're in bases there right now in camps, and they're armed. Will they be moved to Belarus? Lukashenko does not know, because this is a lot of people and weapons. Uh, the transfer would be rather, uh, it's, it's not easy to negotiate. So right now, it's a kind of freezing of the situation as it was on the 24th. And what, very importantly, uh, they, they did seize up to 10 billion rubles in cash. That's about over $100 million worth. And it was returned to Prigozhin, who said this is money to pay his uh, mercenaries. What? Sir, weren't Wagner fighters supposed to give up their heavy weaponry, hand them over to the Russian army? Well, there was talk about that. It's not clear did that happen or not yet. I think that's going to be negotiable. I, I, I'm going to come to you with the same point that I've been that I've really been asking since the beginning. I feel there's a an enduring mystery around all of this. Putin has not allowed anyone or anything to challenge his rule ever. And now there's a military commander who has the loyalty of thousands of well-trained men who recently marched on Moscow. In any other situation, this would be called a rebel group. And no state tolerates rebel groups unless they can't defeat them. So is that what you're telling us, that Putin essentially can't defeat them, so he has to make do with Wagner and Prigozhin? Well, sort of. I mean, they're not ready to take them on right now, especially as Ukrainians are counterattacking. And they're not, the, the Kremlin is not ready to take on Wagner. They're keeping the ceasefire negotiated by Lukashenko. Um, Lukashenko maybe would want these men to move to his country and have his own mercenaries, and though there's a problem who's going to pay them. So, but right now, it's a frozen situation. The mutiny was not crushed. It ended in a ceasefire, uh, in a balanced situation. By the way, the, the idea of Wagner fighters going to Belarus, there's another problem that Lukashenko himself just brought up, and we, we heard him just before we came to you. Um, he, it appears he was asked whether they, he was concerned that they might uh, uh, rebel against um, Belarus. And his answer seemed flippant for a head of state. He said, quote, anything can happen in life. I've never seen a head of state take such a casual approach to what would be a critical matter of national security. Isn't, doesn't that sound strange to you? Well, it is, at least for Western ears, it sounds strange. Well, the Wagner Group is uh, something re reminding me of this Landsknecht companies of the 50, 16th century in Germany who could hire themselves to different princes and that was considered normal. So that's more or less how it is right now. And Lukashenko would maybe want to have such mercenaries under to make his regime more stable. But he understands that their loyalty is not to him. Their loyalty is to their own company. All right, Pavel Felgenhauer, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.